Malik Murphy was the best player on the field on Saturday. What does that mean for his future at the 40 Acres? You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, we are talking Malik Murphy. He was the best player on the field on Saturday. What does that mean for his future at the 40 Acres? Then we're talking Quincy Olivari, the talented transfer guard out of Rice University, has chose to play his college basketball at Xavier over the University of Texas. And last but not least, the Texas baseball team, Picked up a series win over the weekend over the Baylor Bears, but had to struggle to do it. We talk about all of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I also want to give a quick shout out to the division leading Texas Rangers who picked up a huge weekend series win over the Houston Astros. They got their first series win over Houston in Houston since 2018. And here comes the Astros fans telling me what has happened over the last six years and Four World Series in six years, two World Series wins, and I'm very excited for you guys, right? I live in Houston. I've seen all of it, right? But as Rodney Terry says, I'm living where my feet are, and right now the Texas Rangers are leading the AL West. We are the big dogs in the division, right? (laughs) Let's talk about Malik Murphy and this Texas football team. And Malik Murphy was by far the best player on the field on Saturday, not just quarterback, best player on the field. And I think, if anything, he changed his narrative surrounding his future at the 40 acres you know how well you have to perform to take the media attention away from two media darlings in Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning and that's exactly what he did and like I said I think he changed the narrative surrounding his future at the 40 acres because every Texas fan knew how talented Malik Murphy was and every Texas fan knew if he got an opportunity to showcase those talents he could be a really good college football player I think where the division in the fan base came from and not division in terms of there was any tension but there was two sides of the coin, right? There was a large part of the fan base that felt like if Malik Murphy was going to get his opportunity to shine, it was going to be elsewhere, right? They felt like there was a natural transition from Quinn Ewer starting two years to Arch Manning starting two years in the SEC. But then there was another part of the fan base that said, don't forget about Malik Murphy, right? Malik Murphy will compete with Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning to be the starting quarterback for the University of Texas, right? But I think based on what we saw on Saturday, everybody should be on the left side of that narrative, which is Malik Murphy needs every opportunity to compete for the starting job at the University of Texas, regardless of who's in the room, regardless of their last name and regardless of their recruiting ranking. And like I said, I can't blame fans for skipping over Malik Murphy or thinking that he didn't have a realistic chance to compete for the job because we know that everything in college football is not based off of a meritocracy. Right. There's politics in college football and there's powers at B that sometimes dictate what happens on the football field, right? We know that's not just at the university of Texas. That is the reality in college football. Also, we saw last year when it seemed as though all off season Quinn Ewers was making progress, but he could never take over Hudson card in terms of being the best quarterback on the roster. When we got down to the 11th hour horns, 24, seven inside Texas and orange bloods all reported that Hudson Card was likely to be the starting quarterback for the football team. And then out of nowhere, they come out and say Quinn Ewers is the starter. This offseason, in every media availability that I saw, Steve Sarkeesian painted the quarterback competition as open, right? We knew that Quinn Ewers was likely going to be the starter going into game one, but Steve Sarkeesian, our head coach, in front of the media, painted the quarterback competition as open. Malik Murphy has been at the University of Texas the same amount of time as Quinn Ewers. Now, obviously, Quinn Ewers has the actual in-game experience, and that's a huge advantage to have over Malik Murphy. But based on what I saw on Saturday, there's not a huge gap between them, if there's a gap at all. And Malik Murphy outplayed Quinn Ewers on Saturday, in my opinion, right? But immediately after the game, Steve Sarkeesian and his media availability comes out and says the quarterback competition is over. And Quinn Ewers is going to be our starting quarterback going into game one when Malik Murphy outplayed Quinn Ewers in the orange and white game on Saturday. That decision was made immediately after the game. Right. So, like I said, I do not blame fans 
for thinking that the powers at B might bang the table for Arch Manning to be the starting quarterback going into the SEC where Archie, Payton, and Eli made a name for themselves, right? I can't blame fans for thinking that. But based on what we saw on Saturday, I know going into next season, there better be a quarterback competition that is decided based on meritocracy. And going into next season, Steve Sarkeesian would be a fool to let Malik Murphy walk out of that building because he checked every box and looks like somebody that can be a really good quarterback at the 40 acres when you talk about leadership he's shown that since his days in high school toughness playing in the state championship game with a fractured ankle a winner winning that state championship game with a fractured ankle poise after everything he's dealt with at the 40 acres coming in to the spring game like that where all the talk is about Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning and you perform that well size Colt McCoy said he's bigger than Vince Young and he looks the part arm talent the strongest arm in that room accuracy deep accuracy intermediate accuracy short accuracy going through his progressions going through his reads making the right decision right i mean everything you name it right footwork mobility right mechanics all of that he put that on display on saturday the players gravitate towards him they love him he's somebody that's going to be a really good quarterback and he deserves every opportunity to be the quarterback at the university of texas going into next offseason and like i said i know you have arch manning as your quarterback three he's kind of on deck waiting in the wings but Malik Murphy has if he has anything to say about it it's going to be a dog fight to determine who's going to be the quarterback going into next season and like I said Steve Sarkeesian is a fool if he lets Malik Murphy leave this room without giving him every opportunity to be the starting quarterback going into next season I just pray I just pray that even with Arch Manning in the room Malik Murphy and Arch Manning, that quarterback competition is based off meritocracy and not based off recruiting rankings and last names. Quick word from FanDuel, and then we're going to talk about the Texas basketball team and the Texas baseball team. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back, and there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. So I want to talk about the Texas basketball team, and I am officially concerned, right? I'm not hitting the panic button, but I am officially concerned, right? Ronnie Terry got the job, and I've been a very staunch Ronnie Terry supporter, and I don't think things have been great to open up his tenure since the interim tag has been removed, but I was all for giving him and the university patience to build this roster, even though it seemed as though all the momentum they spent, you know, three months building has gone away in the last two weeks. But now I have to say my level of concern has raised, right? Because you lost Rowan Brumbaugh and he could have been a piece for you next year. We don't, we don't know what we were getting, but he could have been a piece. He decides to leave. Arterio Morris, who should have stepped into a starting role, decides to leave the program. We haven't heard anything from Dylan DeSue, Dylan Mitchell, or Tyrese Hunter in terms of returning to the 40 acres. And then AJ Johnson, who was slated to be one of your five stars coming in, decides to go play professional basketball in Australia. Now, most of those I explained away and didn't necessarily put them on Rodney Terry. I think the only one I put on Rodney Terry fully was Arterio Morris, but I still had confidence that he could go into the transfer portal, still maybe get Dylan DeSue back at a later date, maybe Tyrese Hunter or Dylan Mitchell, and still put together a really good roster. But now you're losing on multiple transfer portal targets, and I'm not understanding what's going on. Because I saw somebody from Orange Blood say that there was a difference in opinions in terms of NIL and playing role at the University of Texas between Texas and Quincy Olivari. Well, my question is, I'm not sure what their NIL strategy is. I'm not sure how much they have allocated towards the basketball team in terms of NIL. But why is Xavier outbidding the University of Texas for anybody? And that's no disrespect to Xavier, but this is the University of Texas, bro. We got oil money. Why is Xavier outbidding us for anybody? And then we want to talk about a role. Why is there any argument in that regard? We don't have a playable guard on the roster. What role are you arguing? Like, I, I'm like, I'm not, and, and like I said, that's Orange Blood's reporting. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's just what I saw. What would be the argument about a role? To me, you should be going in the transfer portal right now telling every guard they have the opportunity to play 35 plus minutes. There should not be a guard that does not want to come play at the University of Texas right now with the brand we have, the facilities we have at the Moody Center, and the fact that we don't have a playable guard on the roster or committed to the team. Like, and you're losing out on Quincy Olivari. Max Amos is, is, 
you know, he just took a visit to Kansas State. They're a realistic contender for his services. Matthew Cleveland, I haven't heard anything on that front. Kata Shedrick, I haven't heard anything on that front. What's going on? How are we getting outbid by the University of Xavier? <laughs> like, how is that happening? And how are we not selling guards on playing time in the transfer portal when we don't have guards on the roster? Like I said, I'm a very staunch Rodney Terry supporter, very staunch supporter of the Texas men's basketball program. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the NIL strategy. I don't know what's going on with Rodney Terry and this recruiting. But right now, this is not a great look. I still have patience. I still have confidence that when it's all said and done, they will field a very competitive roster going into the season. And if the Texas football team has taught us anything, it's that rosters on paper don't mean anything. So I have confidence we'll field a really good basketball team at the 40 acres this year. But, man, all that momentum we spent three months building, we have lost it immediately. And the fact that we are losing on all of our top transfer portal targets, especially at the guard position when there's literally no competition on the roster right now, I think is cause for concern. When you talk about the Texas baseball team, I went into this weekend saying they needed to sweep them, right? I thought they lost two games that they shouldn't have. Definitely the Kansas State game. You could make the argument that the Texas State game was the fifth game in five days and their arms were just taxed at that point and they didn't have enough to beat Texas State that day. So that may be just a scheduling loss. But, you know, I thought bouncing back from that, you should have went four and one. You went three and two. You had the opportunity to make a statement by sweeping the Baylor Bears, who are 12 and 22 right now currently on the season, right? They're just not a good baseball team. And based on the way that the Texas baseball team has played for the last month and a half, I thought that they should come out and assert their dominance in the series. But yet they won the series two to one, outscoring the Baylor Bears 27 to 25.